Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you to IOM and Patricia and Marla and everyone. It's so great to see everyone. Um, I am Beth Bafford. I'm a director on the investments team at Calvert Foundation um, and was told to ask to uh, tackle this investment lens. Um, <laughs> sorry, asked very nicely. Uh, so I'm going to go through a few things. One is just kind of an impact investing 101. Um, I know a lot of folks in the audience might not have a uh, kind of familiarity with uh, this growing industry or, or sector. Uh, talk a little bit about uh, Calvert Foundation and my organization and how we look at both investments in global health as well as investing in women's economic empowerment uh, and then talk a little bit about uh, kind of the, the global health investment space more broadly. Um, and it was great to see the, the framework kind of put up there by Krishna to, to lay out the, the, what we're talking about and where, where this piece fits in. Um, so I thought I'd start just with this um, kind of spectrum uh, to familiarize you guys with kind of what we're talking about when we say impact investing. Um, and so in the purple on the left is kind of traditional investments. Um, so all the way to the left is what you would see as kind of uh, people who are looking uh, for profit-driven investments, people who are looking for a certain level of returns based on asset class. Um, that's kind of all the way to the left. Um, and then all the way to the right, over in the blue, is traditional grants, um, donors, uh, traditional giving, uh, charitable giving where you're, where you're giving away your money and never seeing it again. Uh, what we're talking about is this area in the middle. Um, and there's a few things, uh, a few different shades of gray in the middle here um, that you guys might have heard of. One is socially responsible investing, um, ESG investing, which is environmental, social, and governance. Um, so people that are putting either positive or negative screens on their investment based on their values or things that they want to see in the world. Um, and then the middle, the, the green, is this kind of positive impact investing. So people who are investing usually in private markets, so not publicly traded, um, that are looking for a blended social and financial return. Um, so really looking for both. Um, when they're making that investment, um, whether it be debt or equity uh, or different kind of uh, hybrid tools, uh, but really looking to invest in organizations that care about the, whose, whose business models are really uh, providing social good. Um, and you'll see this is where we fall. Um, so so the, the organization that I work for, Calvert Foundation, which is actually not a foundation, but an uh, investor, uh, and uh, we fall kind of in this direct impact investing. Uh, we've been doing it for about 20 years. Uh, a few trends that are leading to the kind of uh, the, the explosion, if you will, of this sector, which is really exciting. Um, one is the pending wealth transfer of more than $40 trillion over the next decade uh, to millennials, to the millennial generation. So there's a lot of wealth that's about to be transferred. Um, the, this generation is known to uh, care about uh, social issues, social and environmental issues, and uh, look for uh, those values in purchasing decisions that they make. So not only their investments, but in what car they buy, what, where they shop, where they buy their groceries, um, and, and there's just a, a growing awareness uh, of how those values are matched with everyday purchasing decisions. Second is crowdfunding, um, which you guys have probably heard of, which is people um, having access to more direct investments to projects or businesses um, that they care about. And online platforms have made that a lot easier. The Jobs Act is helping make that easier. Um, so there's just this more direct connection between people and their money and the investments they choose to make, which I think is good for us. Uh, socially responsible investing, which I mentioned, which was kind of the, the screening, um, just came out that there was a 60% growth in, in SRI funds over the last year. Uh, and there's, it's now one in every $6 invested that is somehow screened. Um, in one way or another, which is pretty amazing. Uh, and then lastly, this, this increased need for private capital in communities as government and philanthropic sources um, are you know, struggling to meet the full needs of communities and society. Um, so we all know that there's an incredibly important role for government and philanthropy to play, um, but they will never be sufficient to solve all problems. And so really bringing in this private capital lens is going to be really important uh, as we look to uh, scale new innovations and, and look for broader, more market-based solutions. So those are just some of the trends that we're seeing in the industry. Um, what Calvert Foundation does is really try to bring um, individuals more uh, 
connected more to the communities that they're serving. Um, and so this is just one of our graphs. This is one of our U.S. campaigns. But essentially, we raise money through a, what we call a community investment note, which is a fixed income product available to retail investors. Um, we then pool that capital and invest debt into community development organizations, both here in the U.S. and internationally. Uh, and then we try to make that direct connection between the investor and the projects that we're investing in so that they really see the impact of their work uh, and can really understand the stories and the metrics and the impact that their $20 investment or $100 investment or $1,000 investment is making in their community. Um, so what we did last year was, was start to embark on uh, uh, trying to understand the global health investment space and trying to understand if there was a role for us to play in that space. So internationally, for the past 20 years, we've invested mostly in microfinance and fair trade. Um, and we are looking uh, at new sectors internationally to support, given that uh, microfinance and fair trade have kind of matured, grown up, uh, and, and can now access broader sources of capital. We're now looking for, the, for our next thing. Uh, and, and one of the, the areas we started exploring was global health. Um, and so embarked on a kind of landscaping research report with Duke University and IPIHD and USAID and Investor Circle to really um, lay out what that space looks like and understand if there's a role for our capital to play in helping to strengthen the health system. Um, and that report's available on our website now. Um, so what we did was to really break down, okay, when we look at global health, obviously you all know, you know there, there's a million different things going on. There's a lot of different parts of the value chain. Um, so we tried to look at what are the most common kind of investable areas of the value chain that we see um, that we can really pull in um, private health investors to, to focus on. And these were the six categories that we came up with. So there's the physical delivery system, so the, the, the places where people go, the clinics, the hospitals, uh, the med devices and supplies, the pharmaceuticals, and that's, you know, everything probably not, you know, all the way R&D, early stage R&D, but everything from pharmaceutical, you know, local pharmaceutical manufacturing to distribution. Um, payment systems, so trying to understand how people get health insurance uh, on the private side. Uh, mobiles and other technologies, as Krishna mentioned, there's a huge opportunity there to, to leverage technology for health delivery. And then logistics and distribution, which is obviously very important in these countries. Um, so this is how we kind of started to look at the spectrum of global health. Um, and really what we found was that there was not much money, especially, uh, that was really focused across system in, in really this whole system strengthening. There's a lot of money that looks at from a disease lens or from a population lens saying, you know, I really want to uh, solve TB or I really want to, you know, serve the rural bottom of the pyramid populations. Um, and there's not a lot of funding out there that is really looking across the system at infrastructure building, uh, at building that full value chain. Um, so that's where we decided we wanted to, to be, kind of that, that, that cross system player given the flexibility of our capital. Uh, the other lens we take on this, we have a sector lens here, but we, always, we also take a women's empowerment lens. Uh, and so a, a couple of years ago, we launched our first uh, women's economic empower empowerment uh, portfolio, where we created a portfolio of investments in organizations that were empowering women, uh, and then went out to the marketplace and raised capital from women who cared about that issue. Um, and through that process, we really learned that um, this lens can be placed on every sector. Um, this women's economic empowerment lens is tr it's, it's true in financial inclusion, it's there in health, it's there in agriculture, um, it's there in the environment, in energy. Um, and so what we learned through this process was that as we develop these new sectors, as we look at things like global health, as we look at things like access to clean energy, um, we will also always be putting this kind of gender lens on our investment and tracking the metrics of how those portfolios are affecting and empowering women. Um, so this is just a little example of that. Um, lastly, we're not alone <laughs> at all uh, in this field. Uh, what we did in the landscaping report was talk to all these people. Um, so you can see a bunch of different uh, logos of organizations that are doing investments in health and have been doing investments in health for a long time. Um, and so the, what we did in the report was kind of talk to all these folks and say, what are the opportunities you're seeing out there? What are the challenges? Um, what do you need to, to invest more in health? Um, and we heard a lot of great things that I won't go into right now, but uh, we'll talk a little bit about later. Um, but you know, th there are a lot of organizations out there looking at this sector and are really excited about this sector um, because of this kind of this link between uh, 
financial and social return. You know, the health sector is, is a huge one in every developed country, um, and is, there is a huge opportunity in these developing countries to build the system in a way that provides uh, good business, but also huge uh, impact for the populations in these countries uh, and the women, the women that are involved. Um, and so the report kind of tries to, to organize this activity uh, to show you know, where people are, what people are thinking, and how we uh, can be more coordinated in how we think about this investment so that we can increase the channels uh, and the flows of private capital in this space. So with that, thank you. Thank you.